Are you ready for Prentice's formula part three? As the saying goes, the show must go on. I am, in fact, not wearing half of my breakfast. I had a dermatology appointment on Monday. Next time, I promise my face will look at least a little bit better than it does right now. What's important here is that we wrap up Prentice's formula. Prentice's formula, part three, example one. Before we do that, we have a very brief bit of housekeeping and consider it a public service announcement. Remember, always wear your sunscreen. <clears throat> Onward. Very typical prescription, minus 375, minus 275 at 66. Minus 425, minus 325 at 137. We wanted a PD, person's pretty big, of 3435. For some reason, nobody entered a PD of any kind. It went to a default, and the glasses were made at a PD of 64, or 3232. My PD, by now to you, should be ringing some bells and whistles, and you should be saying, PD, I need the power at 180. So in order to get there, this does not fall neatly into our 30, 45, 60 rule, or any percent rule for that matter. If I do flat transposition, it certainly doesn't get me to 180 degrees. So we're gonna use the power in oblique meridians formula. I've drawn it out, or written it out, however you wanna think about it, um, and if you followed along in a calculator, it would come up like this. I have 180, I need 66, that's a difference of 114 degrees. The sine of 114 degrees squared is 0.83. And in your calculator, that'll run out to far more, far more digits. I multiply that times my cylinder value, and that gives me a minus 2.29. That's how much of my cylinder is in play at 114 degrees. I take that amount and I add it to my sphere value for a total power of minus 6.05 at 180 degrees, because that's the first thing I need. There's my blue marker here. So this is, this is one of my Ds here. Power in oblique meridians formula. I need 137. I'm sorry, I need 180. I have 137. It's a difference of 43 degrees. The sine of 43 degrees squared is 0 0.46. 0 0.46 multiplied times my cylinder value gives me minus 1.51, which I then add to my sphere value, which gives me a minus 5.76 at 180 degrees. P is equal to HCM times D. There's my D for my right. There's the D for my left. Now I need to find out my HCM, the other part of the formula. I wanted 3435. I got 3232. 34 minus 32 is 2. 35 minus 32 is 3. What are these? millimeters, not centimeters. Remember, parentheses formula, HCM. To convert my millimeters to centimeters, I divide it by 10. So I end up at 0.2 and 0.3 centimeters. Distance the lens moved. If I take my 0.2 and my 0.3 and I multiply it times my total power at 180, I end up at 1.21 and 1.72. Rounded, prism, we only go to one decimal place. We've got a 1.2 and a 1.7. This, as you know by now, tells us 
Nothing. Now I need to go ahead and draw this out to find out whether or not these two amounts cancel or compound and then figure out what that person's actually experiencing in their brain when they put this pair of glasses on. Looks like a pretty good place to start. Uh, what do we have so far? We have our power at 180, our power at 180, we have the error, the error, and we have our amount of prism error created by the movement in this meridian in this power. Now let's figure out if this compounds or if this cancels. I wanted 34 and they gave us 32. So I wanted my OC here, but it ended up here. So let's give ourselves a reference point there. I wanted 35 and I got 32. So I wanted it here, but I got it here. So let's give ourselves a reference point there. Now let's go ahead and draw this out. Minus power. Right. Looking through base out. Looking through base out. You can see that we're not concerned with this. We're concerned with what prismatic area they're actually looking through. Base out, base out, compounds. I take my 1.2 and I add it together with my 1.7 for a total of 2.9. Not done. The final answer, the one that you would get correct when you check the box on a test for this would be 2.9 diopters of prism base out in your right eye, 2.9 prism diopters base out in the left. This is your total answer to everything that we just worked through. So two lessons to take away from this. One is it takes a little time and effort to reach this point. It's a multi-step process, which I hope you're starting to learn. And two would be always wear a hat and sunscreen so you don't look like this when you're my age. Let's do example number two. Example number two, pretty basic one. Gentleman comes into the store with this rather high prescription, asks to have his glasses adjusted, New optician running the show, they get a little carried away and they take the guy's glasses and they grab the nose pads and they crank them way, way in. So what happens is instead of that frame sitting here, all of a sudden it's sitting way up here. They've shoved the glasses up. The OCs, instead of being right there in front of their pupil, are now raised up above them. So we have an adjustment error. because The pads are squeezed too close together. They've been raised up away from the center of the pupil, so we have an error in the 90th. Our prescription's already written for the power at 90, so we don't need any powers in oblique meridians, formula, or conversion, or anything there. So all we're trying to really figure out is just how much of an error was created. Would the person even notice? Uh, would they stumble out the door? Would they fall off the curb? Would they just put them on and say, hey, that's actually the best they've been and wander away? Who knows? Let's find out how much of an error was actually created. How much were the glasses pushed up? Six millimeters. Prentice's formula calls for centimeters. So we divide our six by 10, which gives us 0 0.6, 0 0.6. Multiply times our power at 90 and our power at 90 gives us a total prism error of 3.6 and 3.9 for each of the individual lenses. By now you know that that tells us nothing. It is only after we do the next step 
that we can determine the actual total amount of prism error created. So let's just go ahead and do that next. Give me a minute. All right, uh, let's finish this up. We've got a plus six in our right with an error of 3.6. We've got a plus 650 in our left with an error of 3.9. Where did the error come from? We wanted our OC here, it's now here. We wanted our OC here, it's now up here. What do I have? I have a plus lens and a plus lens. I'm drawing it in the 90th. Where is the person looking? Base up, base up. My chart tells me that base up, base up, cancels itself out. It reduces the overall effect. So I can take my 3.9 and I can subtract my 3.6 for a total prismatic error in this pair, 0.3. And I would write that out for a total answer of this person experiencing 0.3 prism diopters base up in my strongest lens, which would be my left. This be the total error, the total answer for what happened when that optician squeezed those nose pads together and pushed it up. We'd be right on the, probably right on the edge of tolerance, but we'll get to that in a couple of lessons from now. On January 22, 2017, the International Olympic Committee received a formal complaint of unsportsmanlike behavior. The complaint states, on or about August 13, 2016, during an open training session, an unidentified North Korean archer did enter the team locker room, break into a locker, and switch a complete set of eyeglasses for another. The supreme leader and coach of all North Korean Olympic athletes, Kim Jong-un, vehemently denies the claim and dismisses it as, quote, Western propaganda. The Canadian archer, name withheld, to whom the eyeglasses belonged, was one round away from a gold medal in 300-meter competition. Under further investigation and a careful review of video surveillance footage of the locker room, it was determined that such a switch did in fact take place. A search of the North Korean dormitory was conducted and the archer's original pair was found. The two pairs of eyeglasses compare like this. Are you ready to solve the case of the meddling archer? Good. Let's figure out exactly how we would present our findings to the Olympic Committee. The glasses that were discovered in the locker had an OC error, instead of being level, one was up, one was down. That would give us an error in the 90th. Our prescription as required in both pairs was 77 and 79, but I need the power at 90. In order to determine that, I'm gonna to have to use the powers in oblique meridians formula. The sine of 13 squared is 0 0.5. The sine of 11, squared is 0 0.4, 0 0.04, excuse me. Multiply times my cylinder value, added to my sphere, and I have my total power, my Ds, for my power at 90. My Canadian archer, required a PD of 20, I'm sorry, an OC of 2121. That's where they see it, saw perfect. That's where they had no prismatic error. That's where the OCs would have been directly in front of their eye. The pair that was found, that he was found to actually be wearing had one OC height at 18 and one at 24, a difference of three millimeters in each direction. 
my millimeters converted to centimeters, because that's how Prentice's formula is designed, is 3 divided by 10, which gives me 0.3. My 0.3 times my total power at 90 gives me a total prismatic error of 1.0 and 1.2 for each I. As you know now, that tells us nothing. So what we're going to do is we're going to take these two numbers and we're going to finish drawing this out and see what it comes up with when it either compounds or cancels and find out if there is enough error there to really throw that archer off. Let's solve the problem. All right, let's wrap this case up. At 90 degrees in the right eye, we have a plus 3.45. In the left, we have plus 3.95. Kind of makes sense, far-sighted person, be a good archer. Where is super lens? There is super lens. The OC here is three millimeters low. I wanted it here. The glasses that were found, it's down here. 18 instead of 21. In this pair, it's three high. The OC is up here. I wanted it here. Plus lenses. Let's draw a couple of plus lenses in that profile in the 90th. And we have got base down here. And we've got base up here. When we have base down and base up, those two compound or add together. So I have got 1.0 plus 1.2 for a total prismatic error of 2.2. The total answer of what this person would have experienced, why they ended up shooting somebody in the stands instead of the target because of those glasses being switched. 2.2 diopters, bum, ba -dum, ba -dum. base down in the right, 2.2 diopters, base up in the left. Yes, this person has got some serious problems and tolerance way off the charts. Uh, we're talking six millimeters where you have a uh, tolerance of about one. So not a good thing. And yes, I think the um, North Korean archers um, tried to pull a fast one on this guy. And I think he caught it. And I think that he should be given his medal back or something. All right, that wraps up our three-part series of Prentice's formula. We're going to take a little sidestep. We're going to start doing some learn the lens meter videos. We're also working on some edging videos. Let's learn to edge lenses in-house. It's going to be a couple of weeks. It may actually be a month or more before we get back to Prentice's formula. When we start working it in reverse, where we start deciding, and it's kind of more important, how far we would need to move a lens in order to create prism that was desired in a prescription. So until then, have a great time, and I will see you next week with another installment. Thanks.